So I'm Marty Daniels, the president of the Jackson County Stockman's Association here. We are at uh, the K-Bar Ranches, affiliated with Seven Feathers, and uh, we are having our annual work day for our associate members to come down and work their cattle. Some of the people that we uh, have in our membership don't have the facilities they need to work the cattle. So we put this together twice a year for our members and allow them to come. We bring a vet. Dr. Richardson is here on, staff, on site today and she's uh, working these cattle. She's preg testing cattle, semen testing bulls, trick testing bulls, um, and uh, just doing general vaccinations for the cattle to keep them healthy. First year in our tagging program, the first two numbers is the year the cow was born. The second two numbers is the number of the animal in the herd. So she is my son's second cow. Are they 0402. Are they supposed to have calf by now? Is that what you're trying to go to the back side over there? Yeah. <laughs> updating all of our vaccinations, you know, taking advantage of the, the facilities and the fact that the vet came here and, um, and the Cattlemen Association put this on, Stockman's Association put this on. It works perfect for, you know, somebody like me with one cow. <laughs> the, it saves on the vet's time and, you know, having the resources is great. I think she wants that tighter. Huh? You want that tighter? Pins, put your pins on top of her number. Corey's standing there holding the lamp. Brought cows. I had, I had them. <laughs> I had them load. I'm just gonna give her the her, the cavalry nine. So that's our eight way that has okay. tetanus in it too. And then we'll do the um, the bova shield or the um, not bova shield the uh, virus shield six. Okay. You don't put pasture cattle in that shiny trailer. Do you? Not in the new one. Heck no. <laughs> I think it was in the 1950s that Oregon, the Oregon cattlemen requested um, the state government that we need a brand inspector. And so the, there's a brand inspector in every county, and um, our job is just to make sure that the right cow gets back to the right owner. So when we have like open range, and there's a bunch of irons, brands running around a range, so then when they come in, I just make sure, oh, this guy, this, these cows go to here, and these cows go to there, and I write up paperwork, and um, it's kind of like a, um, a car registration. In the 50s, yeah, the when the cattlemen wanted to uh, yeah, ask for a brand inspector, there was cattle wrestling was very profitable. So on these big open pieces of granola, you could run into a set of pins, load them up, take them to Missouri. Nobody would have, even though they're branded. And if they're on open range, they have to be branded. So that was kind of a big problem. Um, since we've had um, the brand inspector's position for the last, what, 70 years, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 really so um, decreased a lot. <laughs> Um, like so, that. most of the time, if somebody ends up with a cow that isn't theirs, it's oh, no, purely yeah. by accident. It's it my job to catch it. Yeah. So. Oh my god, this is so, so tempted. Yeah. Well, then why can you always harp into me? Are these things only for 12 months? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to do it to. Yeah. So, I grew up in Myrtle Creek and, and still live in Myrtle Creek. I lived in Klamath County for about 10 years. Um, my family always had a, f a few cattle around. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't make our living off of cattle. We made our living off of logging like everybody else in Douglas County did at that time. Um, always been around agriculture and, and, and have enjoyed it and, and have a, some small skill. So I've been able to, to work my way up into management of a fairly large agricultural operation here and, and I, I enjoy what I do and I enjoy being successful and, and making food to feed people. So I'm Nathan Jackson, General Manager of K-Bar Ranches, which is the agricultural arm for the Cow Creek Band of Umpqua Tribe of Indians. I'm also President of the Oregon Cattlemen's Association. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so there's, there's several different sectors to the, to the beef industry. There's, there's the, the seed stock sector, which, which is the, the piece of our industry that makes the bulls. The, the registered cattle that are that breed most of these cows. Then there's the cow calf sector. That's the, the mama cows make the baby calves. Then there's a backgrounder and stalker operation, which is where we fit in. We buy those uh, five to six weight calf in the fall. We raise them up until about this time of year, in about a month we'll be shipping. And, and then when they get up to a nine weight steer, we'll sell them to a feedlot. That's the next sector of the industry. The feedlot will grow that steer out to about 1,400 pounds on, on a, a high concentrate ration. Um, they, grow them, they grow them rapidly to put on a lot of fat deposition within the, within the muscle, the, what we call marbling. Um, and genetics has a lot to do with that. Then from the feedlot, they go to the um, harvest facility, the, the packing house. There they get processed into the primal cuts that, that you see, and from there they go on to a retail, a retail section. Um, so that retail, you know, they go to Safeway. Safeway gets, they, they don't get a New York strip steak. They get a New York strip loin and that loin is going to be about this long and they will actually take that and they'll cut that loin into steaks so that's what you see as a as a consumer at the end of the day in the meat case and then of course the most important part of that whole production chain is the consumer so as if if people don't buy our beef then we all go out of business <laughs> So the changes I've seen in, this, in the cattle industry here in Jackson County um, are the younger generation has not came up through the family ranch and continued the heritage of the family ranch and continued on in the industry. They've went on to bigger and better things and so we've left with the older generation keeping the ranch but obviously not being able to continue the bigger herds and so we're being overtaken by the bigger ranches, the bigger corporations coming in. The small producer isn't as prevalent as it used to be. The average cattleman in Jack in uh, Oregon is fi average herd in Oregon is 50 head or less and uh, some of the big guys K-Bar Ranch here runs about 2,000 feeder calves on this ranch. That's just one of their many, many ranches. My name's John Elliott. I'm a cattle rancher in Jackson County. I moved over here from Eastern Oregon about 20 years ago. I'm the, I'm the political advocate for the Jackson County Stockmen's Association, or the legislative act, uh, uh, person. And what we do is, as you know, cattle people are relatively conservative land users. And what we're interested in is land use decisions and the problem we have with our legislature is that most of the legislators are from the Willamette Valley where land use is quite different from where it is, what it is here. So along with the Eastern Oregon counties, we try to convince the legislature through our state advocate from the Oregon Cattlemen's Association to at least listen to what we have to say about land use. We always lose these fights, but 
we try to get little pieces of legislation changed so that it isn't quite as damaging to us as it might be. And some of those things have to do with, with, with uh, housing on rural property, with, with uh, crop use on rural property, with, with uh, open and closed range, with things like that, mainly to do with animal agriculture and, and with, with uh, cattle ranching in general. So that's my job, and what I do is, is interface with the Oregon Cattlemen's Association uh, political advocate, and we try to get people to go to Salem to, to, to uh, testify at committees, which is quite an undertaking in itself, because nowadays you may only get one minute to testify at a committee hearing in Salem. So people will drive from here to Salem, wait for two hours, testify for one minute, and then come home. And when you're testifying with a com in, a, in front of a committee that's mostly the opposition, it's difficult to, to get people to do that. So what we try to do also is get people to write uh, their concerns and to, to try to, to uh, convince the legislature to listen to us. That's my job. My name's Linda Anderson. I am married to Rick Anderson, cattleman in the valley. Our daughter is Marty Anderson, who works for us. Um, we started the Anderson livestock business in 1985 on Agate Road. We buy and sell cattle there. It's not an auction, but we have a day to accept cattle. Um, my husband goes to several different sales during the spring to buy cattle. Um, Rick and I own our own cattle, which is separate from the business. We run about 600 steers in the summer and we've got around 250 mother cows. And um, Marty helps with that, works for Rick and I. Um, Way back in 1963, um, Rick and his family, the Bigham family, drove cattle down Antelope Road past the um, Cascade Shopping Center from out at Agate Lake down to where the dump is now. And a few, just a few years before that, there were no houses out there except for one on Antelope Road. So it's changed a lot and you wouldn't want to drive cattle down there now. <laughs> Be a little dangerous. <laughs> so, um, my husband grew up in the valley, was born and raised here. Um, I was born in San Francisco. My dad was a saddle maker and we came to Oregon because he didn't want to uh, stay with the union down there and started his own business here. Um, I grew up in 4-H. We both grew up in 4-H and Rick was in FFA. Um, FFA wouldn't allow the girls in FFA at the time I was in high school. <laughs> um, <clears throat> our daughters both went through FFA, Marty Anderson and Jody Baldwin now. Um, we have one granddaughter in FFA. Uh, she uh, has cattle and so do her twin sisters. So they're all learning the cattle business, giving shots, how to feed, how to take care of them, how to calve, uh, what happens when you have a loss, lose a calf or lose a cow. Um, we promote giving shots and keeping your cattle healthy. Uh, if you bring them to us to sell them to us at our company, uh, we want to know they've had those shots because you can turn them out in the field and find one dead if they aren't properly taken care of. So um, we don't do any haying. We buy our hay out of Klamath Falls or wherever necessary to get good hay. Um, 
We've been in the business for 56 or 7 years, basically. <laughs> 810. 810. Okay. 1020. All right. I will sell all my yearlings to any of you three right now. <laughs> you, you, just, you just tell me what they weigh. It's 805. 805. So your scale wasn't too bad. It said 770. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's about what we figured. It I was guessing her. I didn't get a look at her up there. I knew I, I said. I, I, was say, I said, she's not. She's not <laughs> no. I, I win the jelly bean. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Randy, you can have another muffin. Oh, oh no. Yeah. One's good. My name is Randy Wolf. I live in Eagle Point. I raise cattle and I raise hay. Have you always done that, Randy? Um, I, I, I've grown up with this. Um, I did divert, as many of us have had to do, with a um, a separate job. You know, I, as a mechanic to pay the bills, because ranching requires a second income most of the time. Your family is from here. Uh, family is from here, multiple generations. Um, in the, yeah, just in this valley, and. And we've always been involved in the cattle and the hay and horses and the, and all that. So. You talk about how many pairs you have. I I just have a very small group. I run 25 pair of registered Angus cows. And you and you raise hay. And I raise hay. Yeah. And um, I raise hay to feed the cattle, and I also raise hay as a marketable crop. And in this day and age, hay is becoming a fairly valuable commodity especially due to us and the cattle industry and the hay industry losing the ground to the hemp and the marijuana. Leslie Richardson, I'm a mixed animal veterinarian here in the Rogue Valley. Uh, so I see equine and livestock as well as small animal uh, dogs and cats. Um, so today we were here with the Jackson County Stockman's Association doing uh, some uh, preventative care for uh, local cattle um, owned by some local breeders. Uh, so we vaccinate for uh, several different um, bacterial diseases as well as viruses to help keep them healthy. Uh, also we give them uh, medication to help treat uh, intestinal parasites and liver flukes and then some vitamin shots as well. Uh, with the pregnancy uh, evaluation, we are feeling, so sometimes we'll use an ultrasound, sometimes we'll just feel uh, with, a, with our hand or arm and uh, feel for changes in the uterus that are consistent with pregnancy. Um, we do go in rectally. Um, so feel for changes in the uterus consistent with pregnancy. Uh, oftentimes in a lot of these today, I was feeling the fetus. Uh, because they're large enough that you can feel the fetus at this point. So um, it's important for producers to have pregnant cows so that they can um, continue their herd. And that's how they, by selling the calves, is how they make money to pay for, for feed and hay for them as well as the, the shots to keep them healthy. <laughs> Can you feel too? Um, okay. I, I wouldn't.
hard to tell if they were twins right now. Is that what you asked? Yeah. Or, I almost feel one, one foot or two feet. They have four, so. <laughs> Also bread. Oh, okay, you got the huh? You got the cake? So I think people are just very excited to know that they're um, that their cow or heifer uh, was had a successful breeding so that uh, so we have a, a calf to look forward to their gestation is about nine to ten months and I'm um, so happy to have a calf to look forward to at the end of the gestation and again it's it, there's a money factor but there's also really a, um, an animal husbandry side to it too that uh, the cows are supposed to be in production. It's best for them if they're in production um, raising a calf so they don't get overweight. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Is that the way you want your mom? Oh, your video. <laughs> oh. Taking your picture. Thank you.